was me, so I did it. <laughs> but they'd almost always say that. You know, this is appropriate for tonight because the Super Tuesday, there are some people that are quite happy with the way things are going. There are others that are not happy at all with the way anything is going on this. And, and in order to take your mind off a little bit and help relax, and this is a little different sort of introduction to this, but I'm going to show you what I did, what I did have done in the past, it's extremely relaxing. In about 1991 or so, I moved to California. And shortly thereafter, I married a wonderful lady in Santa Rosa, California, just north of San Francisco. And she ended up passing away in, in the year 2000. And so I moved later, I moved to Santa Monica, and then later to Las Vegas a year, and back up here. But while we were married, she was a professional musician. She was a harpist. And we went all over. In fact, we even did concert, a couple concerts in, in Europe that had her way paid over. And she did a lot of weddings, a lot of just planned concerts. So between my work and her work, we, we lived fairly well. And she taught students, among other things. And she had piano students, voice students, and harp students. And the harp students, realized that they wanted small harps to practice with themselves. And then I was looking at it, I could buy a kit. So I got a kit, put it together, and sold it. And then about 30 more of them also wanted a kit, small harps. And I couldn't get the kits that fast, so I started making them myself, which was somewhat cheaper, but a lot of time. But it did also give me the flexibility, instead of just ordering either walnut or cherry, I could order use exotic hardwoods, I could have people paint the, the sound box and paint the soundboard, whatever. And so tonight I'm going to go through a little bit about how to make your own harp. suggest for almost anyone that's doing this, if you want to get one, buy a kit. If you want to make a guitar, buy a violin, whatever, get it, buy a kit. It's a lot easier. But the harp will end up looking something like this, and then there'll be strings coming up through here that are actually the easiest to put in, and then you tune it to a piano or a tuning fork, and just, I, I just, yeah, so I just tuned the C's, and from there on you can kind of tell how the notes go and where they should be. But the strings rest and stretch out for a day or two, do it again, and it's, it's ready to sell. Ready to sell. You'll notice, and I'm going to pass these around in a few minutes, the sound box and the sound board. This is very thin plywood. It's four ply plywood and only an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. I was able to get it at hobby stores that sell parts to make model airplanes. And all the other wood is a hardwood, which is much stronger than the softwood for that. Uh, this particular type is a, I, I think it's a birch. And this, uh, the back and the sides are quarter inch plywood with two thin sheets of rather hard material in the inside for of a soft material so that the sound will sort of bounce on the inside and be somewhat released through the out of the holes but and then also especially from just in the air of the string that is full tight. If you'll notice that part of the difficulty of making these is that every angle where it comes down is this angle, say from here to this angle is different. These angles are different. The angles at the top are different. These side pieces and the side boards, the front board also, are set glued into a groove, the top and bottom. So I have to cut a little slot for the groove, maybe a quarter of an inch in, and fill it full of glue, put it in, put a lot of clamps on it, and watch it uh, 
and the next day it'll be ready to use some more. So I'll start on this side on this one and you can pass it around and look at it if you like. They're actually fairly nice and then all the material that I use is, is uh, called one by material and that's three quarters of an inch by uh, one by four is three three quarters of an inch by three and a half inches one by five and I used a few, a little bit of one by eight, which is uh, three quarters for the bottom, which is three quarters by seven and a half. If you notice, this is a little offset. This is composed of five pieces of one by, one, one by four, one, one, however the scraps work out. And then this wider board is composed of two pieces glued together which is much stronger than one piece. Two pieces glued together is always stronger. The, the, this ends up in the middle of the bottom, and this is right on the top. So you see, there, there's a difference in the side, and that's to allow it's good space for the wires to go up. It also means there's a, that there's a little bit of an angle in here where it's attached, so that some of the holes, and I use wooden dowels, need to be offset. So, and actually, it was kind of fun once, once I got down to it, but still, I mean, usually made them in groups of three, and it'd be the better part of two days' work to make three of them. But we sold them for, depending on if there's painting and expense, what kind of wood it was, we sold them for four fifty to uh, between four fifty and five hundred, and four fifty, and I would say about five and a quarter, uh -huh. and. I spent a little over $100 for parts. That seems amazing too for a small bit of wood, but it, it's, it's expensive. And with that, I know it's a bit of a suggestion or a, a nuance to, to do this for relaxation, but it, it works that way. It's good for relaxation. I want to thank you all. It's